As many of you know, if not all of you, we're currently in the middle of a pandemic. This means a disease has spread among enough of the world, or any region really, and has infected enough people that it's gotten the world's attention. And Corona has definitely done just that. It's also caused hysteria, panic, and concern, for good reason. With just under half a million cases worldwide and just under 20,000 deaths at the time of this recording, the virus, which may not even show symptoms to some of those infected, is definitely worth pandemic status. Of course, while the majority of the world is focused on the virus that's shaken up the entire planet, others are worried about what the next big thing could be. And this is where we introduce the HANA virus. You may have heard of the virus, which is currently going viral on social media. A virus going viral. Who would have thought? 2020 is weird, man. Either way, today on Life's Biggest Questions, we'll be answering the question, could the HANA virus be the next big outbreak? How's it going, guys? Welcome back to LBQ. I'm your host, Jared Bronstein. And although we're all quarantined, we're still making sure to keep you guys entertained and informed with content. If you want to show us some support, make sure to subscribe to our channel, give this video a thumbs up, and even share it with a friend. We got some bonus content to wrap this one up, but for now, we need to talk about the HANA virus, which has recently claimed the life of a man in China, as well as hundreds of others. Much like the family of viruses Corona has, which includes SARS, MERS, and this new virus we're continuing to learn about, HANA virus is quite similar. Rather than it just being the name for a specific virus, it's an umbrella term for multiple infections, or as the CDC refers to them, a family of viruses. However, unlike Corona, it seems the type of disease you can contract from HANA virus depends on your location. In the United States and majority of the West, HANA viruses such as Sin Nombre and Andes can lead to the disease HANA virus pulmonary syndrome, also known as HPS. Other strains of HANA virus, mostly in Europe and Asia, are more likely to cause hemorrhagic fever with renal syndrome, also known as HFRS. This is due to the fact that the virus is found in rodents, and depending which rodent lives in your region determines the type of disease you could contract if infected with the virus. Now the good news, if there is any, is that unlike our current pandemic, HANA virus can't be spread from person to person, at least for the most part. For one to contract HANA, they would need to be bitten by an infected rodent or eat a rodent with the virus. Alternatively, coming into physical contact with the infected rodent or inhaling dust contaminated by saliva, urine, or feces by an infected subject could also lead to one contracting HANA virus. Now, as previously mentioned, the viruses, which can lead to a deadly disease, isn't as contagious as corona appears to be. HPS, which is the version of the disease usually found in the Americas, has never been transmitted from one person to another, which means healthcare professionals, or even someone caring for an infected subject with HPS, would not be at risk for contracting the disease. With that being said, if someone was unfortunate enough to contract the disease, their symptoms may not show for up to eight weeks. However, they would know when they were ill, as the symptoms appear to be flu-like at the beginning, and much more grim as the disease strengthens. To start, fatigue, fever, headaches, vomiting, chills, the standard stuff. However, according to the CDC, anywhere from four to 10 days after the first signs of illness, the later symptoms tend to appear. These include coughing and shortness of breath, which is due to the infected lungs filling with fluid. Although people have recovered from HPS in the past, it has a mortality rate of 38%, which is quite scary. The disease eventually attacks the heart if not treated, and at that point is past any kind of treatment. Now let's move on to HFRS. The HANA viruses found in Europe and Asia, including Hantan, Dobrava, Sarima, Seoul, and Pumala are all known to lead to HFRS. Unlike HPS, HFRS is an umbrella term for a handful of diseases. These diseases include Korean hemorrhagic fever, epidemic hemorrhagic fever, and nephropathia epidemica. Think inception, but with disease and viruses. To break it down into simpler terms, a rat infected with HANA virus is consumed by a person, obviously unaware the rat is carrying the virus. In the Americas, that person is likely to get a HANA virus, such as Sinombre or Andes virus, which could then turn into HPS. Take the same scenario but change locations. Instead of the Americas, our subject and the infected rodent are located in Asia or Europe. This person is likely to contract Antan, Dabrova, Sarima, Seoul, or Pumala virus, depending where they live. These viruses can then turn into the disease HFRS, which have similar symptoms to HPS. Later symptoms can include a drop in blood pressure and kidney failure, eventually leading to death. Interestingly enough, the severity of the disease depends on which virus you originally contract. 
Reports claim Hatan and Dabrava, which are mostly found in China, Russia, Croatia, Romania, and Greece, as well as a handful of other countries, tend to be more severe than Seoul or Pumala, for example. In regard to mortality rates, it depends on the virus which causes HFRS, but as per the CDC, deaths can occur in less than 1% of cases, up to 15% respectively. Alright, so now that we understand what these viruses are all about, what's the deal? Is it going to be the next big outbreak? Well, I'll be honest, I'm not a fortune teller, but my money is on no. As previously mentioned, the viruses can spread through ingesting rodents' bodily fluids or by inhaling dust which has been contaminated by an infected rodent. Meaning, if you don't live somewhere with a rat infestation, you're probably good. And even if you do, not only would you need one of them to be carrying a strain of Hana virus, but you'd then need to either eat the rat or sniff some dust with rat pee on it. What I'm getting at is that the odds of this becoming an outbreak is highly, highly unlikely. Not impossible, just unlikely. The fact that it can't spread as easily as we've seen corona spread is a great sign. And we know a lot more about these viruses as they've been around for decades, hitting North America as early as 1993, and Europe as well as Asia back in the 1950s. Canada sees three cases a year compared to the United States, who usually have around 35, but between 1993 and 2017 had a total of only 728 cases. However, there have been outbreaks before. Back in 93, an area between Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Utah called the Four Corners was determined to be where the first outbreak of the Hana virus occurred in the United States after a handful of people came down with an unexplainable illness. More recently in 2012, an outbreak occurred infecting 10 people in Yosemite National Park in California. And in 2017, the CDC confirmed 31 facilities in 11 different states tested positive for soul virus, mostly rat breeders. However, there wasn't much concern because it couldn't be transferred between humans, or so they thought. There have been rare cases in Chile and Argentina where people infected with the Andes virus have infected other people, but it seems to only happen with that specific strain of virus. So to wrap up, could the Hana virus be the next big outbreak? Well, technically, it is possible, but the odds are extremely, extremely unlikely. I'd say less than 1%. Aside from the fact that it is quite tough to get a strain of the Hana virus in the first place, it seems only one of the strains is contagious from human to human contact. Unlike the most recent strain of Corona, which is still incredibly new to us and highly contagious, it seems Hana virus is quite the opposite. We've known about it for almost 70 years in Europe and Asia at least, and although it can lead to deadly disease, it doesn't seem to be as fatal as initially thought. Most recently in 2018, Panama had an outbreak of Hana virus, but the World Health Organization released a statement reading that quote, Based on the current epidemiological data and public health response, whose risk assessment is that there is no significant risk of international spread of HPS in relation to this event, end quote. So it seems even when there are small outbreaks, they're not only being monitored and contained, but also don't seem to be much of a concern for anyone, or at least the entire world. So no need to fear guys, let's just focus on this corona thing for now. Alright guys, that was a lot of talking on my end, so now you guys gotta let me know your thoughts by dropping some comments down below. Do you think coronavirus is something we should be worried about as well, or should corona be our only focus? Let me know below, for now let's reply to some comments from the video, how to create a doomsday bunker. Gregory Guzman said, come on, seriously, board games and books? We all know that all we would bring for one-on-one -on -one entertainment are boxes and boxes of condoms. All right, brother. Well, listen, Gregory, I don't know, man. I don't know about you, but, you know, like, I definitely would not need those. Not to say I don't use them. Don't get me wrong. You guys should definitely use them. It's important. I just, uh, I guess I don't get lucky. Anyways, moving on. Fujin Rule said 46 seconds ago. Now, I'm not really sure how to reply to this comment. I think they were just saying that's when the video was posted. I'm not sure. Like, instead of writing first, they're writing the time. I don't know, but thanks. Candy Plays said, early squad, please reply. I love your purge video. Candy Plays, hey, early squad. Shout out you. Appreciate you. Anyways, guys, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon to never miss a video. And of course, be a part of the early squad. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. You guys have been watching Life's Biggest Questions, and we'll see you in the next one.